Hello everybody, Sifu Belida Hanuchkun here, and I'm going to talk about Wong Jack Man. I was looking through some martial art videos last night. I was actually binging a ton of martial arts videos on YouTube. Everything from instructional to people reacting to Cobra Kai to movie bits and all that stuff. And while I remain a Bruce Lee fan, um, I'm going to give some props to Wong Jack Man. How good was Wong Jack Man? when he fought Bruce Lee. We know it happened. We've heard several different versions of the story and the most popular one, the one I heard first, was Linda Lee's first version where it was just um, Wong Jack Man, Bruce Lee, and I think she said she was the only witness on Bruce Lee's side and maybe even it was only them three. Later on, it was said that a delegation came down with them, <clears throat> with Wong Jack Man. And she claimed, you know, fight lasted um, about two minutes. Uh, later, we heard five minutes. I've heard seven minutes. A seven-minute fight between two skilled martial artists would have been something to see, okay? So... I have heard about a previous fight Bruce Lee had with a karateka, a Japanese karateka that lasted, quote, 11 seconds start to finish. Um, and the other guy had, a, you know, cracked skull and wound up in the hospital, so that might have been from falling. Um, one version has of the Wong Jack Man fight. I think Linda Lee's original version was he knocked him out, then it was... The guy tripped and fell. Bruce got on top of him, basically grounded and pounded him while saying, do you give up? Do you give up? And he quit. Um, all right. One thing Linda Lee agrees on and the other side agrees on is Bruce Lee started the fight, initiated the first attack with a bilgy that managed to hit the forehead and not the eyes and caused a scratch. So... He drew first blood in the first few seconds of that fight. So the fight didn't start off with a lot of maneuvering and all that. It started off with an engagement and contact, okay? <clears throat> so I would say the action escalated pretty quickly. First of all, anyone capable of holding off an aggressive Wing Chun fighter like Bruce Lee, like any of his classmates, Wong Chung, Lung, William Chung, in the early days, they they often had challenge matches, street fights, and things like that. And um, you know, it it should be mentioned that anybody capable of holding that off for seven minutes, even two minutes, <clears throat> would have to have been a, an accomplished martial artist, right? But how good was Wong Jack Man? Here's what I can tell you: good enough to hold someone off from two to seven minutes. I'm voting for five just for the happy medium, but I think there's a strong case for seven. <clears throat> strong enough that Bruce Lee, who basically prided himself as a Wing Chun stylist and said, Wing Chun is uber superior. I just need to add a little, little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, good enough that after that fight, Bruce said, I'm no longer doing Wing Chun. I'm creating my own style. Good enough that Bruce Lee changed his diet for the rest of his life afterwards. Good enough that he adopted many different conditioning regimens, running, weightlifting, things like that. Good enough that he began to talk about how not just other Chinese martial arts were deficient or useless. He never finished Wing Chun or a complete Chinese system. Bear that in mind. I don't think he was right about that. But <clears throat> he started saying Wing Chun was an incomplete system. Um, good enough that after that, aside from changing his training, he completely intensified his training obsessively. You get the feeling he barely won that match, that it took a lot out of him, that it shocked him, that it rocked his world, changed his worldview. And like I said, 
There aren't that many fights around that if you're already fit, already training, and eating a mostly Chinese diet, which is fairly healthy, that you change your diet. You know, after that, he was like, uh, I'm not going to drink alcohol. I, I'm pretty sure he avoided smoking already, but you can't really tell. Smoking is really popular among Chinese, even martial artists. Um, he must have been pretty good. But there's more. It was in the 1980s, maybe around 87, if I'm not mistaken, around that time. I read an Inside Kung Fu article, and it was Danny Inosanto. It was in the front of the magazine, and it was a page with some carryover in the back. And he talked about all of the different instructors he trained with. And he talked about sea lot He talked about, you know, so many things. And he mentioned Wong Jack Man. So he wasn't there in that fight. But he must have heard about that fight. He must have wondered about that fight. And Wong Jack Man um, was known before, during, and after Bruce Lee's career. And he sought him out and paid him to train with him. There must have been something there. And I want to take it a little, a little bit further. After the fight, Bruce Lee changed everything. Added things, subtracted things. Became an obsessive fitness buff. And, you know, learned things like boxing. And got into, Jun Ri taught him uh, some Taekwondo and things like that. And um, became a different person on a pretty much a different path. Wong Jack Man, after that fight, continued to teach in Chinatown. <laughs> continued to flourish and prosper. He had started off as a waiter, and he became a, a professional paid martial arts instructor. Now, I don't know... If he did it full time as his only job, but he maintained his teaching from the mid 60s, I, I believe, until the late 90s or 2000s. I've got to brush up on his obituary. I'm assuming he's dead. But he prospered and flourished, and Chinese and non Chinese alike flooded to his studio over time otherwise it would have closed and then when he died his students um i've seen stuff from his students praising him eulogizing him uh putting forth his side so that doesn't seem like someone who was soundly beaten in public i mean to get all of that despite being labeled as the guy bruce lee beat and he didn't change his name there must be something there. So, Wong Jack Man, I'm giving you your due. Um, you were obviously a skilled martial artist, skilled enough to spur a young man, he was about your age, who was also starting his career to not stay on the path he was, but absolutely transform the path he was and become a legend, okay? And I'm not talking about the ridiculous but incredibly fun Birth of the Dragon movie, which I'll admit I love that movie. <clears throat> but, um, you know, I, I am saying there was something there and it remained there. And your students over decades saw that there was something there, got, got to training with you, stayed there. And I believe some of them became teachers themselves. And it was the same path you were on, a traditional Kung Fu path. So I really think as a Jeet Kune Do fan, and I practice it, still practice it, as a Wing Chun person who, who's practiced it and still practices it, I acknowledge that there was greatness there, just as there was greatness in Bruce Lee, but you were out of the limelight. Thank you, and have a good day.